Hello everybody, I'm Ernest. Today we're at the Pioneer Museum in Fredericksburg, Texas. Inside where the water tower is at, there is a little theater in there. And in there you can um, watch a film of the birth of Fredericksburg. It tells you the history and the person that was responsible for this um, town here in Fredericksburg is uh, a German immigration town. So in the museum, it's just a like a little town, I guess, and they have their buildings, homes, and whatnot, and an explanation of what it is. Like uh, this is somebody's house. This was the the owners of the house was built in three stages. Uh, 1874. I doubt if they had running water back then, but wood stove. I know that we used to have one of these at the ranch. My mom said she would cook her, cook the meals that way. Just some examples. I'm I don't know if these are the original furnishings, but just a quaint little town, a, li a quaint little house. That what a, a typical home would be made. If you notice that the walls were very thick, I noticed that in a lot of these German-style homes that I've been in and I've stayed in bed and bed and breakfasts here, that the walls are always thick to help in insulation. There's an another home it seems to be built in multiple stages just just judging the way it looks uh fourth generation henry Crumman family lived in the home until 1950 Gillespie county H historical society purchased a home in 1955 and opened the pioneer museum in 1957. so as you can see there were it looked like it was uh pieced together it's a quite large home. I guess as the family grew, or people would get married and move their spouses in. Check out this cooking area. And can be used for heating too, I imagine. And inside this home, it's air conditioned. This must be the main home, the largest building here. Has all the some artifacts. Not too old, these are from probably the 50s. Oh, so it, was, so it was a store also. I guess this front part was the store part. And then the rest of it was a home. Check out those old shoes, pointy shoes. In it looked like it would hurt your feet. Yep, so this front part was a store. Chimney. Spool. A lot of little sections. You can see this used to be the exterior wall. 
and this little lean-to was added to it. And I guess they would keep the storage of the stores. All the supplies of the stores would be in here. So as we're walking around, there's a uh, motion-activated voice would come on, and it, they were saying that this this house had six, had twelve kids in it. He, the owner, had six, and his brother passed away and had six too, and they all moved into the house. And here is a cellar, which was very common at those times. Keep, keep cooler. And it, and it actually does feel a little cooler, but the building is air conditioned, so you probably wouldn't would notice it more if it wasn't air conditioned. What these are? This is like to mill. This is to mill something. Grape crusher, used for making wine. So these are used for making wine. For crushing the grapes. And you can see you're at ground level here. Looks like they have those upstairs part, but it's blocked. They don't want you going up there. That was very nice of the owner to adopt his brother's kids and raise them. I don't know if some of y'all might not know, but Admiral Chester Nimix is actually a native here of Fredericksburg, and they have a museum here that is outstanding museum. Just a room. And a lot of utensils and stuff that you might find in I guess in homes pottery I was looking over here a lot of nice china something called Vaseline jar oh, they had Vaseline back then beer steins all types of utensils So the voice you hear on the speaker, it is the grandson of, great-grandson of the owner. And they tell you the story of the, of the building, of how they lived here and what lived here, of how they lived here. And another display for Admiral Nimitz. There's some musical instruments in here, organs. They're just donated. They're not original from to the property. You can see these stones are well worn from traffic. And another kitchen in here. So here they have a smokehouse in back of the um, of the building, I guess, so they could sell it in the store and eat it for themselves. It was a good way to preserve the food because there was no uh, refrigeration back in those days. So this building here is a bathhouse. So basically, you could come here, get shaved. Um, you get a hot meal and a warm bath and a clean shave. So this is where you would come to get cleaned up if you were tra traveling through or didn't have your own facilities. Let's go inside and see what they have here. There's a bath right there. You can get all cleaned up in here. So this is a barn that was in the back of the building. 
and it says that the general st uh, ran the general store and the family also allowed customers to use the barn for their wagon so I guess if you're passing through or whatever you could you come in here maybe keep your horses and stuff and the front is says a blacksmith shop so but all this stuff in here seems to be of other types of there's a bandsaw, there's a, like some type of meal, all different types of um, utilitarian stuff. Actual buggies, I imagine. So this thing caught my attention. This is a uh, fence maker. So you would run like these wires across and then these things would actually form a fence as you, I guess, run it down the line. Interesting. That's before they, I guess they had prefabricated um, fence type stuff available. This here is the blacksmith shop. We actually had one at the farm too. We had one of those fans. I remember as a kid, my uncles would be making parts for the plows and the tractors and stuff and made them all by hand. Some of it by hand. I remember the blacksmith shop very well. Another type. The Smith log cabin was built it's a log cabin. 1879. So this log cabin was actually moved here in 1985 and has been in place but it's it's an original cabin this is how probably that most typical people would be um, housed so adjacent to the um, Pioneer Museum is a beautiful church uh, it was also built by the Germans uh, you can't really see it from here but it's beautiful it's beautiful on, on the outside and you can see the back of the church here we're gonna go inside here into the Fredericksburg Volunteer Fire Department Museum and see what they have there and I think there's two other buildings and then I think we would see there's quite a there's quite a bit to look at here and the prices are very reasonable just some old uh, fireman type um, stuff you would see, I guess, in the 1800s for fire protection. This thing here is a beaut. I guess you would heat it up and it would pressurize the water. I'm not really sure. It is, uh, it's called a 1911 steamer. So I guess it needed the steam to pressurize the water, maybe. I, I'm not really sure how that worked, how would that would work. So this here is an example of what they call a Sunday house and basically the farmers that lived on the outskirts of town would uh, build these house in town because they would come into town on Sundays or, on, or during the weekend to go to church and whatnot and instead of going riding all the way back on their horses or wherever they got here they would just stay in town and they would build these little cottages in town so that they could do the social events, uh, go to church, and all that kind of stuff. So this was like their weekend homes. And they're just little one room type buildings. This is the schoolhouse. And you can see how they would write things in English and in German. It was built in the 20s. So we walked the property and um, I would highly advise this place uh, to come and and uh, take a gander if you're ever in the Fredericksburg area. It's very inexpensive and the buildings are original 
and um, very educational. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.